guys, it's Amy. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to look at some awkward Twitter confessions. And no, I don't mean ex-confessions because that honestly just sounds a little bit um, not safe for work. <laughs> but these are Twitter confessions from back in my day when it was still called Twitter. I used to pretend the microwave was a bomb and stop it on one second, feeling like I just saved the whole world. Oh, totally. Who doesn't do that? I always, I, I don't pretend it's a bomb, but I do have the habit of stopping it just before it goes off. You guys do that too? Sometimes in public, I'll think, I know you can read my mind, just in case someone there actually can. <laughs> that would be so funny if you're like, I know you can read my mind, and you look around, there's someone like, how do they know? <laughs> if I knock slash scrap, scrap, scrape one foot on the floor by accident, I have to even it out and knock slash scrape the other foot. Otherwise, I feel uneven. No, why are you hurting yourself? If you stub one of your toes, you're going to stub your toe on the other foot to make it even? That just seems like a miserable day. I don't know why, but sometimes when I'm walking, I have this game where only one foot is allowed to step in, in each tile, and sometimes I see a tile from afar and I pre-plan which foot will touch that specific tile. Okay, I used to have some games like that, like, um, you know, when I was a kid. I think any good child who doesn't want to break their mother's back would <laughs> avoid the cracks in the sidewalk, so the result would be, you know, you're kind of just stepping on each tile but yeah I don't think I've ever planned out in advance like okay when I get to the end of the street it's gonna be the left foot <laughs> that's interesting every time I get in my car I make sure I check the back seat because I don't want to get choked out from behind okay one of the first times I heard about this was in a book of scary stories <laughs> that I had as a kid I think the book was called the thing at the foot of the bed if I can find a picture of that book I'll show you but I think there was a it was a book of scary stories and one of the stories was about someone driving at night and whenever they looked in like the rear view mirror, they could see something there. But when they turned around, there was nothing there. And oh my gosh, that gave me nightmares for weeks. Just the thought of like thinking something's there, but you can't really confirm it. Oh, I had no idea sitcoms were taped in front of live studio audiences. So when I used to watch shows and heard people laughing, I thought it was the rest of the whole world at home watching and laughing into their TVs. So I used to laugh extra hard right into the speakers. <laughs> that is so... That is adorable. But I speed when I go over bridges just in case that just in case that MF wanna collapse. <laughs> bridges are kind of scary. Like I don't know if you've ever been on a bridge on like a really windy day and it feels like you can feel the bridge moving and it's like, oh no, this is not safe. Whenever I walk on a sidewalk or anything with shapes on the ground, I have a certain amount of steps in each square or shape. Oh, they need to meet that other person. <laughs> they can plan out their, you know, steps together. I rub my feet against each other at night as a soothing mechanism. Rub my feet, I, oh, okay. For a second I thought they were like rubbing the bottoms of their feet together and I was like, that seems more uncomfortable than soothing, but I guess they could be rubbing them like this way. Or maybe, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, let's not overthink how these people are rubbing their feet together. I'm scared to use a flashlight at night because I feel that it's going to land on some weird monster slash humanoid creature thingy and that's how I'll die. I have questions. They must just never use a flashlight because when else, <laughs> just say you don't use a flashlight if you're not using it at night. But also they've watched way too many horror movies, I think. <laughs> I pay attention to numbers and patterns a lot and accidentally memorize them. I'll be driving and read the license plate in front of me and it will be stuck reciting in my head all day. Okay, <laughs> story time. Even though I'm out of the realm of like dating videos for right now, but I'm still gonna throw in one of my like dating stories. So I went on a date with a guy, like a first date, and it was fine. We met like at a tea house and it was fine. But afterwards, he was like, yeah, it was really great meeting you and something, something. 
and your license plate number is, and I was like, what did you say? And he was like, oh, I was just saying your license plate number is this. So I think he was telling me like, oh, it's interesting that your license plate number is whatever. But at that time, I didn't even know my own license plate number. I remembered it since that day, but it was so weird that he like not only noticed my license plate number, but was like at home thinking about it. Would that freak you out? It freaked me out. Whenever I'm getting a plate or a cup from a stack, I never get the one on top. I take the one below it. I do that sometimes. If I think whatever's on top might be dusty, <laughs> then I'll pull from the next one down. And it's the same thing in like supermarkets. Like um, usually I'll try to take the can or whatever from like a little bit further back. Sometimes I try to see if I can complete multiple tasks before the microwave is done. There's an unusual amount of these about feet, feet and sidewalks and microwave. <laughs> I was a 16 year old apprentice butcher. I had just cut my finger occupational hazard. I was mixing sausages. No, 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 no. And lost my plaster in the mix. So I mixed everything again. Sorry to the people of Selkirk who ate my plaster for breakfast. <laughs> Ugh. That is, <laughs> like, grossing myself out with this. That's disgusting. I will often burp right in the face of my dog to watch him excitedly sniff the smell of the meal I just ate. Okay, so we're getting into weird territory because these are the anonymous confessions. So it's like people are really telling, like, yeah, people will publicly admit, like, associated to their name and face that they look at the license plate number or they check the microwave early or something like that. But these are the ones that can only be confessed anonymously. <laughs> I used to play dead as a game with my parents. A few weeks ago, my girlfriend right. went to a funeral of a relative, totally forgot about it during the day. And when she came home in the evening, I decided to play dead on the kitchen floor as a joke. She didn't think it was funny. Honestly, I just can't imagine a situation where that would be funny. I, 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 <laughs> I'm still trying to think of maybe, but yeah, I just can't imagine a situation where you come home and you think your significant other is like passed out and then they're like, no, it was a prank. It was an epic prank. Like, I book hotels for bosses at work and use my personal login for a well-known reward site where you get a free night for every 10 you book. I've had holidays and five-star hotels for free. How nobody wonders how a low-level admin can afford weeks away at the best resorts in the world. That's just smart. <laughs> I said something I shouldn't have to my boss and it was escalated to HR. I had to think of an excuse why I said it. I told him I was, oh, I told them I was stressed due to the fact of finding my wife in bed with another man. Total lie, but kept my job. We have to think about consequences sometimes. At your next work event, when you bring your wife, they're gonna be giving her the side eye <laughs> because they think she's a cheating heifer. No, you couldn't think of something else like your goldfish died or something. I preheat my toilet paper on the radiator. Just so much nicer to wipe when it's warm. Okay, I think that could be confessed you know, publicly, like that doesn't need to be anonymous. <laughs> I always dry my ears with my pants after my morning shower. The thin material really gets to the parts that a chunky towel can't. But you have like earwax on your pants now. So that, that's a little gross. Maybe you could get another, I don't know, a handkerchief or something that you can use just for that. But it is kind of weird to stick your pants in your ears. <laughs> my mates all think that my wife doesn't let me go to the pub anymore. In reality, I would much rather spend the evening with her and the kids and then cuddle up with a glass of wine and a film than listen to drunken guys talk crap about football. <laughs> Aww. He can't just say I like being at home with my family. He's like, yeah, the wife, she won't let me come out, guys. Sorry. <laughs> That's kind of wholesome. Whenever I'm driving alone, I pretend I'm reviewing the latest supercar to a camera for Top Gear. I've got a 10-year-old. What? 
Okay, I thought it was gonna be Citrion. Citroen? Cit. Hold on. I need help. I, I don't. I've never heard of this card. How to pronounce Citrin? Oh, Citrin. Citrin. Oh, that's much easier to pronounce than I thought it would be. <laughs> okay, I've got a 10 year old Citrin. <laughs> My wife and her siblings are all fully grown adults, but they celebrate every birthday like children. Last month, I had to sit and watch a 45 year old bloke drag out opening presents for 90 minutes and acting like a 10 year old. I hate it more and more each year. Oh, I mean, just because you're an adult doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to enjoy things. And he's not hurting anyone because it's not going to kill you to wait 90 minutes while he's like, what could it be? Oh my gosh, I hope it's that fill in the blank thing I wanted. So I, I like that. I'm a gas engineer, worked in a customer's house, and he was an absolute jerk of a guy. He was doing a 1,000 piece jigsaw. When I left, I stole one piece. The satisfaction of knowing he'd spent hours searching for it brings me nothing but satisfaction more than 15 years later. That is, so, that's too petty. The fact that he's still happy about this decision 15 years later, that's too much. My husband loves chicken. I always give him more than me when serving. Then during the meal, offer him some more of mine. He thinks it's because I'm not keen on chicken, but I just love seeing his smile when he gets extra chicken. That is so sweet. That's more like it. That's very sweet and wholesome. I once got my annual salary paid in one month. No one contacted me from our wages department. I emailed them a few days later, but put a comma rather than a dot in the address so it would fail to send. And so I'd have proof I told them. That was eight years ago and no one ever contacted me. Sneaky. <laughs> My boyfriend told me he'd really like to try drag race. So for his birthday, I got us VIP tickets to a drag show. We met the queens. He even got the chance to dress as a queen and go on stage with them. He went along with it all, but later told me he actually preferred motorsports. <laughs> I hope they got married <laughs> because that is such, I mean, he was being such a good sport. Imagine like you tell your, <laughs> you tell your significant other that you, okay, oh, I need to get it together. Okay, imagine you tell your significant other that you like <laughs> drag racing and you show up and they're like, here, you get to put on this dress and go on stage and you're just like, well, okay. <laughs> like they did take the time to plan this out for me. So I'll let them know later that this wasn't at all what I meant. That's so funny. All right, that's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give me a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.